So yeah, like it says on the box, I'm making an ASCII adventure game. I don't really know what to say for these type of videos, so I'm just gonna narrate over what I'm doing and how it works. Here you can see me making the main menu and the first parts of the game. And now you get to see me putting my heart, soul, and tears into the most beautiful ASCII art ever created. Uh, now I'm giving the title screen a test run. Perfect. And now I got confused out of my mind trying to figure out how to clear the terminal screen on all major OS's. I added extremely basic customization and a kind of introduction which I'll make better later. Right now, I'm just giving the game a very quick intro test. So I guess I should explain how the draw function works. Uh, when I call the draw function, within the parentheses I add a room number, which I'll explain how I get later, in the function. It will see which room number is specified and then draw it to the screen. For each room number, there is a dictionary for, uh, called current chars, which stores the data within each object in the room. So, for a chest there's food, and bookshelf there are books, etc. Alright, now I can explain how the program gets the room numbers. So that current chars dictionary that I touched on earlier comes into play here. In the dictionary, there is a character simply known as D for door. For this character, I assign an integer, which is the room number. Now when you type D in a room where there's a door, the next room is immediately drawn. But this also means that I have to declare the current chars dictionary as global, which is repetitive and stupid, but I can't think of a solution right now. And here I'm just giving the help screen a quick test. Yay, my first error! Thankfully it's not a huge one and I fixed it pretty quickly. Now I'm adding the open chest function and the inventory dictionary. And then I struggle for a few minutes on how to add something to a dictionary before calling it quits for the day.
Today, the first order of business was to figure out this dictionary thing, so I yelled at DuckDuckGo for answers, and it graciously gave me a Stack Overflow answer, which I immediately copy-pasted into my program. By the way, that was literally my most idiotic roadblock on this whole project. Appending to a dictionary is the easiest thing ever. Also, guess what? I didn't even need a dictionary. I don't know what I was thinking. So after that, I got to work on the chest and inventory system, which works exactly like you think it would. I also added room descriptions, which print every time you press enter on the prompt, and add some more rooms to help you learn how to play. As well as that, I added an inf information hologram, which just prints like information to the screen. Here I added the status dictionary, which controls the current game status. Now it was time for the combat system, which was actually a lot easier than I thought. After room 255, the rest are all combat rooms, which contain an enemy ASCII drawing and enemy data for the battle engine to handle. While I was doing that, I also added D2, which can be used as a second door in a room. I'll make more numbered doors later. And here's a quick test of the game so far. I'm adding the open chest dictionary, which holds all the open chest tags so you can't get infinite of the item inside. Another error. This time it was a key error. Thankfully this error worked out pretty well. I just slapped a try accept onto line 128 and coded it so that when it got that key error, it meant that the chest hadn't been opened yet and that it can give the player the item in the chest. And now you can see the battle system completely collapsing on itself, allowing a player with zero health to live. We can't have that now, can we? After a few tries, I just decided to debug for a while and see what was up. 
I fixed it. All it was was Python hating me a lot and not letting me stop the while loop when the player died. On with the show. It was here when I added the last room integer. It just tracks which room the player was last in. Uh, when the player dies, they'll just be sent back to the last room. All right, it's time to check some things off our list. Oh, we've already kind of done these things. I guess we're done. But if we stopped here, the game would just be a story without an end. So let's add some more stuff to our list. First of all, we have to have more rooms to explore in. We also need more enemies and weapons to make the game spicier. And more story, more than just this is you and save the world. Finally, more garbage code, but that's kind of inevitable, so it doesn't need to be on our list, but whatever. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, here you can just see me adding a ton of rooms to the game. And here I touched up a few things and messed some of my functions and added doors 2 and 3. I also added a debug command which just draws the room specified immediately. And the compat system broke again. Thanks Python, very cool. Thankfully, my brain rubbed my two brain cells enough to produce an easy fix. I added the redraw command, which is self-explanatory. And I also made the whole interface look a lot cleaner. I don't want to bore you with just debugging clips and me adding more additions to the game, so I'm just going to show you the end result. If you want to check this game out, add stuff to it, or just criticize me on all the errors I made throughout making it, the source code is on GitHub at nanobot567 slash space with three A's. And finally, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.